What up boys, today we have something a little bit different. On your right is yours truly on a podcast with a man on your left known as Rosé. This video is just a small section about some of my thoughts on Clash Royale topics, but we did an entire hour-long podcast on a whole range of topics that'll be the top link down below. Go and check all of that out if you're interested. We discussed Clash Royale, YouTubing, and a specific virus going around right now. You know, just a small little thing. And on that note, I just want to say I hope you're all doing well. I'm not a medical expert or anything, but stay safe, follow all guidelines and whatnot, and try to keep mentally sane in this pretty insane time. I think I mentioned this in like the full podcast episode, but like, I do hope an hour of just two guys talking about stuff can relieve some of the stress or even loneliness that some of you may be feeling in this difficult time but yeah here's a small snippet the full version is top link down below and yeah please do enjoy how do you feel about the state of clash royale and then in parentheses meta updates events seasons etc so one of the reasons one of the reasons there's many reasons i started but one of the reasons i wanted to become a clash creator is because i felt like there's nobody who talks out about the state of clash in an honest way right people are always so positive and upbeat and personally i don't know if it's a cultural thing again people tell me this is very british but if i think something's bad i will say it's bad and i don't know if that's a personality if it's a culture thing but clash royale hasn't had a big game changing update in over a year and it's mm -hmm. pretty insane to me when i did a whole video on it and i looked at like uh google trends i don't know if you're familiar with it yeah but every update it goes up goes down slowly big update goes up down slowly and that's how the game sort of started because the updates at the start were really game changing like when challenges first came out and when they brought out six cards at a time those things big spikes in terms of updates uh, i don't know i've sort of given up hope i used mm -hmm. to say on videos oh i hope to bring this feature this feature this feature but i stopped doing that because they haven't and i don't know if they're gonna hate me for saying that but yeah in terms of updates there needs to be something big and in your recent podcast where you're going through the ama and you were like um you know i'm gonna be realistic this is probably gonna happen in like seven months uh -huh. um i felt that that hit me because they're always like yeah later this year december you know december 31st like, that big update's coming yeah, and it's exactly. and a little update on that just to while we're on the subject is i yeah. saw something on i think it was clash with shane tweeted out um that it's not gonna be a story mode uh, yeah, I, totally I think it was like Seth. Seth said something on Reddit that like story mode. He said that basically it wouldn't add much value to the game and it wouldn't be very replayable or something like that, yeah. which totally makes sense. And I hope it, I, I'm glad because I didn't want a story mode anyways. Because yeah, I'm with like you. he said, I, the, I like like I even my whole life I've never played like story mode games. Maybe like Fable Two was the only like yeah. story mode game I've ever I played, played. Story mode games, but I skipped the story. <laughs> yeah, like I, I hate watching the dialogue boxes yeah. and like the cutscenes and shit. I skip. I, skip all I like competing <laughs> against other people and I like beating the fuck out of them. That's what yeah, I enjoy. So every game I've ever played, Call of Duty, uh, RuneScape, Clash Royale, like all everything. It's always multiplayer and I like yeah. competing. So yeah. I don't want a story mode. Like I don't. So I'm glad. So there, I, it's almost certain that it's gonna be a clan war, clan war rework, mm -hmm. and I have no idea how they're gonna rework it to make it. They definitely could improve it. I don't know how, but it could definitely be improved. But I don't know. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's about a trillion ways they can improve it, but yeah. uh, not my job to figure out. But I don't know. It's like it'll still be Clan Wars at the end of the day. So yeah. I don't know how they could do it this to really like. Well. Like I'm hoping for something that could bring this game back to like close to its prime. You know, like mm -hmm. a big, big, big update. And I don't know if that's gonna do it. It's definitely gonna be big. It's definitely gonna be an improvement. But is it gonna be? Uh, mm -hmm. Because I mean, right now, as as far as mobile esports go and like competitive mobile, there's not really like I don't know, Fortnite yeah. mobile, COD mobile. I mean PUBG, but like, as far as like the U.S. goes, and I'm guessing that uh, we're over the over there in your your side of the pond over there in Britain is pretty much the same. Yeah, but I mean Clash Royale is like still like there's not a whole lot of competition, so like I don't know if they just I don't know, man. The, the, there's so much opportunity that they're they're letting slide because i don't know if you know but supercell is like a 300 person company or something like that which is oh, ridiculous yeah. i've spoken for... about it before but i i don't get it they always use that as like almost an excuse not saying they're using it they try and like they have a positive spin on it which there is an element of that you know with close teams yeah, you know only having cool. the essential people i get that but at the same yeah. time if you hire just like a few more people yeah that's a cool gimmick right i think that's how i describe it having like a fringe person company is a gimmick but if you want like, obviously, they're the experts, not me. I'm just some kid in a bedroom right now. But, you know, 
in my opinion, if they even added, you know, a hundred more people, which isn't a lot considering how much yeah, that with the revenue, makes, that's that is yeah. nothing. Like, imagine if this game was twenty five percent more popular. Obviously, it's not quite how it works, but imagine, right? There's so much more opportunity, and there's so much more stuff to be done. And I don't know. The only thing that really, really ties me to Clash Royale still is that it's just replayable, right? Mm -hmm. Like the the glorious thing about it is that it's always going to be the same mechanics. So updates will take it so far, but you're always going to have three towers against your opponent's three towers, and you'll have ten elixir and eight cards, right? So yeah. that sort of keeps me in. But game modes for me are the biggest thing. Like they had a two v two, but in my opinion, that was actually damaging for the game because of what it did in terms of, you know, you used to have to play 1v1 with your trophies to get chests to upgrade your cards. Now you can do it on 2v2. There's no risk whatsoever, and you can max whatever cards you want by just playing 2v2. Theoretically, you could be an Arena 1 max player without ever playing a 1v1 game. And that, mm -hmm. to me, is, is dumb and, in my opinion, hurt the game. You remember Touchdown? <laughs> touchdown yeah. when they were like this is a quote they're like this is the biggest update ever i don't know if it's actually a quote but there's pretty much what their yeah they definitely guessed it up to be huge yeah. and it was the biggest game mode it's by funny, far there's so much potential, but none yeah. of it is realized none of it is actually used and it's so frustrating as a content creator i feel like there's a lot of opportunity that they're leaving on the table it's to me the quickest way i could summarize it is it feels like they're playing defense instead of going on the offense and trying to innovate yeah. So they're just super, you know, let's do these conservative updates, one new card, a couple balance changes, nothing crazy, just casually coasting. So the game's going to do one of these, just slowly go down, right? Yeah. And then it's every, like a damage it's just prevention. Like, yeah, it's it's straight defense instead of offense. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see them, like, Risks. It, maybe it's, I don't know if it's, it, maybe it's part of their strategy where they're purposely playing defense because they have a big game yeah. coming out and they're going to shift or I, I don't know the inner workings there maybe they just don't have the resources so it takes them three years to develop reworked clan wars i don't, I don't know but <laughs> it, it's just so defensive and it's slow and it's i don't know if i was a ceo the first thing i would do is kick down everyone's door and say all right i need a big update in a month let's go baby and then just <laughs> and if it flops then okay it, it flops and then we take yeah. it out but yeah. like come on let's you know let's like, Touch Push it a little bit, flopped, but it didn't kill the game, right? Right. Like that risk was. And fine some people because, enjoyed it, you know. Yeah. A few and people did. And if it did. does go really big, great, it's gone really big. But if it happens like it happened, everyone sort of forgets about it. Like yeah. I asked you, you remember touchdown because there's a very good chance you go, wait, touchdown? Is that like a thing? The meta right now, I think Seth gets way too much stick. I think he um, isn't perfect because how can you be perfect? He was a streamer before he did this right mm -hmm. he went in and he was like he knows a little bit about the game but he's never gonna be perfect so in my opinion he does an underrated job not perfect but pretty good the mess is in the best spot ever which you could argue was inevitably gonna happen but he's got it there and you know i don't want to rag on him too much no he's, do, he's doing his job i agree on that he's doing yeah. a good job yeah i do monthly uh reviews where i rate mount changes and the only complaints i ever have is i wish there were more the ones where we get like four changes a month is like to me balance changes should balance the game and freshen the game or refresh in the game they shouldn't only focus on balancing because if you have a balanced game balance changes go away and it's the same game forever right it's a mm -hmm. little bit like you can get away with not updating the game if there's a new meta every month because say next month um I'm trying to make a bad card bomber was the best card in the game it's almost like having a new card because no that, yeah that would shift everything yeah, there's some niche decks that use it, but if Bomber was like the most meta card in the game, the meta shifts up, and for a month, you have this game, which is now Bomber Royale, right? And then next month, you have a new card, you tone Bomber down, and say Wizard becomes the most powerful card in the mm -hmm. game. It's now Wizard Royale for a month, right? And yeah. to me, it sounds toxic to make things too strong, but I'm not even saying too strong, I'm just saying shift it up a little bit. Right, yeah, no, I totally, I, I saw a tweet on my timeline like a month ago that someone was like, uh, we've been calling for a balanced game for years now, and now that it's actually balanced, I kind of want it yep. unbalanced again. You know, yeah. it's just like it I starts feel. to get to a point where it's like, all right, I kind of liked abusing broken cards, and you know, it was like hundred percent. I like being able to abuse cards because, like, I'm not gonna outskill like the top players, but if I can abuse <laughs> like a, like a golem first, which I don't, I, I don't, I don't do golem first play or anything like that strictly because I don't have the card levels, but I would because I like to abuse that kind of 
because that gives me the advantage that gives me a chance against better players so then there's always that hope that i can like excel to the top because like i'm not just going to get there naturally and that's that's the boat that most people are in is if we can like just find that one little tweak that we can kind of abuse just to give us a little bit of an edge it makes it a little bit more fun and challenging because if it's purely based on skill if it's like eventually you'll hit that point and that's why they started doing the trophy inflation is because everyone was hitting that oh, point yeah. <laughs> where they get to and then like the skill levels evil out so this like the same people are going to be in the top 1000 the same yep. people are going to be 1000 to 10,000 so mm-hmm. they had to like you're not really progressing so now they give you this artificial trophy inflation to make you feel like you're progressing, it feels like you're progressing but yeah. like your your global rank is still the same you know your trophy counts higher but you're still you know whatever yeah. I had a friend who came thousand. back to the game recently. He hadn't played in like two years, and he sent me he sent me a message, and he was like, "Yo, I've just started playing again, and I've gone up like two thousand trophies. Am I just really good?" And I had to explain to him, "It's sort of it's like when a kid is like really excited about something, but you're like, it's yeah, lame. versus bubble. I know. So yeah, it's... I know. I had to explain and he's to like, him. Yeah, he's, he thought he was vibing. And he's like, man, I'm a natural. I'm gonna I'm start streaming. You know, he's he's trying to yeah. gas himself up, and you're just like, dude, trophy inflation. You're yeah <laughs> you're still mediocre it's just there yeah 